Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Yeah, I got my hat on. Uh, in today's video, yep, Project Smurf. Uh, it's still sitting out there and left. I've not even worked on getting the engine out. Uh, with the noise you hear in the background, a couple of heaters running. Yes, it did, go, it did get a little bit cold, so I had to turn the heaters on in here, get myself warmed up in here. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. When you work up here in the winter, we need heat to keep cool, or to keep warm. Anyway, uh, and this is something cool, so, uh, stay tuned. I'm going to show you what you have to do to work with this type of setup. Okay, uh, for a refresh, this is a 5.3 came out of a truck okay and uh, that's pretty important to understand the type of motor you're pulling more importantly how you're going to handle the accessories on the on the the motor and what really determines the accessories a couple things that really determine what type of accessories you're going to run and how you're going to space it out properly because everything is dictated by the balancer so if you're running the truck balancer the only accessories that you're going to have to work with are the truck accessories. So, so stuff like with the water pump and all that stuff. But there are options that you can do to still run this truck or run this balancer and run the uh, like the Camaro accessories, the water pump and all that stuff. There are some things that you have to do. Um, what I'm meaning is that this is not a truck pump. This pump is really meant to go on the LS Camaros and Firebirds and all that stuff. It's what they call like a, they're, they got them in dash series, like a dash one, dash two, dash three, okay? A dash three is like the truck balancer. And what that means is how far that balancer sticks out. So if you stick the balancer far out, all your accessories have to stick out to match up to the grooves on the balancer. I'll post in my video. <laughs> sure, my camera cut off. Anyway, I'll post in my video about the uh, excess or the balancer, how far they stick out. I'll put a photo in here so you can see what I'm uh, what I'm trying to tell you, if that makes sense. But anyway, in order to run this type of setup with a truck balancer, this water pump that fits a Camaro has to get spaced out somehow. If you set it flush, this is not going to line up with this properly. It's going to be sitting too far back. And uh, more importantly, it's also going to upset with your other accessories that you're going to attach to to the front. So when we put the uh, uh, put the power steering pump and put the alternator on, if this thing set back, all that stuff is going to set back too far as well. Okay, to start off, we're going to have to space this thing out. Luckily, they make spacers for for that scenario. This spacer takes this pump and it offsets it just that little bit and this helps the alignment between the uh, the pump the water pump and the uh balancer so it puts an alignment if not this thing will set back way too far for the belt to run in the belt on these guys they run out toward here they don't run back here they run more to the edge so if you can imagine if this thing was setting back further this thing would be back here and it'd be it just just would not work so they do make spacers. What's nice about these spacers, the spacers I got, look at that. It only has a port. What do you think you can put in that port? Put your uh, water temp in there if you want to. Or you put your crossover tube in there as well. So there's different things that you can actually put in that port to help out uh, your conversion. Uh, typically what I have done in the past in the top, I have drilled this out, drilled and tapped it. So you can run the crossover tube uh, output of that up here. I have also put my temperature sensor up here as well. So there's a multitude of things that you can do uh, with this type of setup. And with this guy in, with it's already drilled and tapped, it's already set up to go. Be cool if there's something on the other side, but there's not. But you can also do that as well if you wanted to take the effort, drill it and tap it yourself. This motor is not going to have air conditioning. No sense to have air conditioning in a uh, convertible, right? He didn't want AC, don't blame him. So uh, he doesn't even need the heater as well. So this stuff here, not going to have a heater tube up there. I'll have a kind of a, a U. I think I have one up here. Yep. Uh, 
So we're gonna just you that thing on around and don't have to worry about it. Uh, the other thing is uh, no air conditioning. So don't have to worry about the bracket here and all this. But how we gonna clean up this up over here, we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna reverse the rolls. Typically you'll see the alternators hanging up here. I think really high in the air. That looks gaudy. I don't like it. So what we are planning on doing, we're gonna put the power steering pump up here alternator is going to get dropped down here it's going to look like a real bit uh, uh real it's gonna be a real nice install ict makes really good brackets for this type of setup and that's what we're going to be using with the alternator as well as the power steering pump yes there's a power steering pump over there i don't like the look of it it just seems like that it's been leaking a little bit we're going to get a new pump for him so we're going to stick that on here so he'll basically have a brand new water uh, power steering pump the alternator that came off this motor it looked almost brand new and I'll tell you what it's a good powerful one so that's going to get put on put on here as well then once we get all that stuff set on we just have to go and get a measurement for the belt we'll have a kind of a tensioner pulley up here which i have to still have to get that and i'll have an idle pulley right here so it's gonna what i'll do i'll post a picture in the video so you can get a good look of it and uh but at the later on in the video once i get all the parts in you'll actually see how everything's gonna be laid out so stay tuned for that coming next okay got all the valve covers on uh new gaskets new rubber seals on it so these things are on for good both sides intake i got the new o-rings on the bottom uh i cannot find where i put all the bolts for the intake bolts to bolt it down to the heads uh, i do have some but i don't have the long ones so i might have to go to a hardware store plus i need to get them painted black anyway so they'll blend in with the intake so with that we're getting started until i get those done it's pretty much done just need to bolt it down but in the meantime we're going to start working on the front of the motor here okay to get started i need a tensioner and the tensioner basically gets tension on the belt so everything stays nice and snug this tensioner is meant for a Camaro, okay? Because it's mounted directly on the water pump. So this will line up with this guy since the whole pump is offset from the block due to those spacers in the back. This will line up with this, which in turn will line up down that. So this is a uh, setup for a Dash 2 series. And for the belt tensioner, you want the part number, there it is. And I'll leave a part number probably down in the descriptions exactly what I used. So I won't dwell too much on the part numbers here. Now, to get the alternator set up, uh, it's going to be referenced off the block. So in order that, I have to use a truck offset, which would be a dash three part number. And the alternator will line up from here to this guy here. And uh, so the it, the pulley lines up, you know, directly on the uh, alternator. Then when we set up the alternator... It's going to be referenced uh, as a block as, as well. So those bracketry numbers need to be a dash three. So everything's going to be referenced off the block to the balancer. Okay, so let's get started with the alternator. And this is very going to have, we're going to have to do some drilling. I know that's kind of scary for some people, but in order for this to work, I'm going to have to actually drill into the block. I'm going to show you where I have to drill. And if you're looking at the picture already, you're probably probably know where I'm going to have to drill at so with that let's get started okay this is the picture from ICT as how to mount this alternator in particular this alternator needs to be mounted to the block in a couple locations okay the locations where it needs to be mounted one it's going to be mounted here I don't know if you can see that or not it's going to have to get mounted here on the block which is right here and as you can tell there is no hole here okay so what we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to drill a hole in here to get this bolt to go into here and so we can get it uh threaded in here um on the 6-0 blocks it is in there i have actually stripped mine out and i actually have to drill it all the way through the block and put a long bolt and a nut on the other end here we're not going to do that we're going to try to drill it and tap it and make sure we get it all lined up so with that uh, that's the first thing we have to do. We got to get see where the center of this hole is. I'm going to have to drill it. There's a specific drill drill 
number I'm going to have to use in order for me to tap that. I think I have that bit. If not, uh, I'm going to have to go out and get a bit, so I go ahead and drill this. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the drill. Hopefully I have the drill bit here. If not, this project came to a screeching halt until I get that. So here we go. Okay, today is the day we're going to get the accessories finally done for. What we're going to have to do first, we're going to have to drill and tap a hole here. I already started on it. Uh, put a kind of a pilot bit in there to get things started. And uh, basically on these LS blocks, sometimes you don't have a hole here and you got to drill and tap it so I can mount the bracket too. So anyway, to get started, uh, I just took a uh, eighth inch bit and got a straight as hole as I can possibly can. Then what we're gonna do, take another bit. This guy here, it's a type R bit, okay? Then once we got that, we're gonna uh, go ahead and tap it with this bit here. This is a, uh, a 10 by 1.5 tap. It's a metric tap. And that's the bit I need. So what I'm going to do ready to do next is go ahead and, and drill that hole out with this bit here. So let's go ahead and get this drilled out. And once you get that, we'll go ahead and tap it. So here we go. Let's see how far this is in. This is in pretty far. It's in about that far. It's a good inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Uh, and that's basically I'm going to have to go this far in here as well. Probably need to mark this bit just make sure I don't drill too far but still this is not a there's no oil in here there's no water here even I went too far in it's not I'm not going to have it hit anything whatsoever so I'm just going to give some idea where I need to be on it so anyway uh, let's go ahead and get started And next, you just want to clean it out best you can. Okay. Okay, next is to tap that sucker out. Um, there's the tap. Cutting oil is the key here. You want to take your time on this. Uh, you'll add some the oil to it. You get it started. Then you back it out. It's basically in and out, in and out as you get to pull the shavings out. And you'll need to definitely um, clean this bit off several, several times. It's most critical to get this thing in straight from the get-go. And uh, you don't want to try going crooked. You do take your time. Try to add a little bit of pressure to it just to get it to start to bite. Yeah, I think it's bite pretty good. And once it starts to bite, you just kind of rock it back and forth as you're bringing it in the hole. Looks good so far. And then we'll back it out. And I'll show you what I mean. It gets all these shavings in here, and that's why you have to get cleaned out. Um, that's not good. Micrometer is no longer a mic in. Okay. Um, clean, clean up the bits, or not the bits, but the threads. Keep it as clean as you can. Cutting oil is your friend. So let's go ahead and add some more to it. Okay. Got it all tapped. Now I'm going to try the bolt. See how far it goes down in and see where she stops at. So it's stopping right about there. I don't think it can go any further than that. Okay. Must have a little, must have a little burr there. Okay. Don't go any further than that. It's almost down to where it's just barely showing the threads on the end. 
and I think we are good enough. So yeah, we got plenty of space now. Forgot we had to. I forgot to include this space on here, so the bolts aren't going to be sticking in that far. So I probably drilled and tap it so much further than what it needed. Okay, put that there. There we go. She's mounted, she's secured. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So let's get the alternator put on, see if I can't get that pulley put on. And once I get all that, this whole thing is completed. Okay, now we've got the alternator in place. All we have to do now is just get the uh, pulley on place. And uh, after that, just a measure measuring the belt, what belt I'm gonna need for this. Okay, so I'm gonna take the existing belt, belt and cut it, measure it, and that's go down to the parts store and say I need something this long. So, uh, or, or some, you know, within that distance. Uh, it does have a tensioner on it. It's a manual tensioner. It's not one of those spring-loaded ones. So you just kind of pull tension on it and tighten it down. Oops, there we go. And tighten it down to what you want. So I do have some leeway of what size belt I need, you know, a half inch one way or the other should be good to go. You typically want to favor it where you want to tighten it up. Then over time, the belt will stretch a little bit and you come back in here, you just tighten up a little bit more. Then usually it's good to go. So it's not one of those manual tensioners where as it ages, it, it puts my automatic tension on it. It's old style. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, let me get the pulley on, see what that looks like, and uh, then we'll call it a wrap on this video, so bear with me. Okay, I'm decided not to put the pulley on right now because I still need to work on the lines for the power steering pump. Now, I don't want to put this thing already on where I have to take it, turn right back off. Plus, I need to get it painted, and I'm thinking it might even change in the style of the pump and go to the more newer style with its open design, three ribs on it. I think that would look similar to this style here. See how it's open. Just basically take that design, put it there. The reason why they went to those more open style ones is just for this reason right here. So in case you ever have to pull the power steering pump, you do not have to pull the pulley off because with its open design, you can get a wrench in here and get to these bolts and pull it right out. So. That's the reason I think they went to that more open design. So I might just put this one back, save it, and go out and get a newer one. They're really not that expensive, 20 bucks or so. Get a newer style, I think it would look a lot better anyway. But I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and put it on right now. Even if I did have the newer style, I wouldn't put it on here until I get my lines ran for the power steering pump. I'm gonna make new lines uh, from here down to the pump and without that pulley on, it's going to make it a lot easier to get to to get to the power steering rack. So uh, with that, guys, I am officially done putting accessories up on this guy. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will try to leave the part numbers what I used uh, to build this type of setup and, uh, and leave it down in the description or in the comment section. I have decided where I'm going to put it. But anyway, it will be down there. Uh, so in case... You want to know what I use to get this style set up? I'll have all the part numbers for you for that. So anyway, uh, with that, I am out of here. Take my glasses off, put all dirt on them. Anyway, with that, I'm out here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Link, subscribe, do what you have to. We're growing. So with that, until the next time. Hey, there's an empty hole. Woohoo!